Lotte is getting wired up. And I think we need to switch presentations. Both of them? Okay. That's yours. I'm sorry. Giving out other people's bottles. Not supposed to. Okay. Well, Lotte is uh, changing uh, presentations. I mean, robot soccer. It, it must be a technical university to come with the topic. Such as that. Yes, we will switch on the microphone. Meanwhile, people join the innovation stage. We have so many interesting topics. And, and from a bionic hand to uh, robot soccer, I don't know where the world was uh, heading to. Um, but Lotte will take us to the, to the next speech. Are you ready? Yes, I okay, am. Okay, take it I away. Uh, if the presentation is. Yes, it is. Yes, thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Lotte, and I'm going to tell you something about uh, my robot soccer team from Eindhoven University of Technology. And I will do that um, with some movies from our team. I will tell you how it works, what we do, what our goal is. And I all like to invite you after this presentation to our soccer field. It's in the hall uh, next to this one. And we do also their live uh, demonstrations. First, I will introduce myself. I'm Lotte. I'm a master's student from Eindhoven University of Technology in the field of mechanical engineering. Um, and I'm a part of the Tech United uh, RoboCup uh, team from TUE. And I'm currently the team leader of the robot soccer team. Um, so our team has a robot soccer team. We play in the so-called middle size league. Um, but we also develop a care robot. And he's called Amigo. And we have actually a second one. And we're developing a new one, Sergio. And this, these care robots are being developed to um, operate in a domestic environment to help elderly people or uh, disabled people to be able to live um, uh, longer uh, individually at home. Uh, our team consists of students, but also PhD students and even TUE alumni, alumni who are really enthusiastic about this project. Because this project is RoboCup, it's a worldwide project and I have here, um, and by a movie, I want to show you, uh, yeah, what this is. Yes, this was the RoboCup two years ago in Brazil, and uh, at this event, teams from all over the world, university, also companies, um, come together to play competition uh, with each other. Uh, in Robot Soccer, these are our robots, for example. And by doing this competition, we challenge each other to become uh, better and better each year. This is Amigo. This is our care robot. He's picking up drinks. He's actually uh, taking orders from people in the, uh, uh, at the party. And then he's getting the drinks and he's trying to find the right people to deliver the drinks. And here we're playing a match. You can see the crowd around uh, the field. Uh, it's nice to see how many people uh, like to see uh, robots playing soccer, even though they are not interested in robotics at all. And this was the year we became the world champions two years ago. Unfortunately, last year we didn't win the final. We did reach the final, even. Uh, uh, but we didn't win, unfortunately. Next month in uh, Germany, we have again the World Championships. And even in Brazil, some Dutch supporters. Okay, so RoboCup uh, is a worldwide federation. And uh, about 16 years ago, they, um, they set a goal for themselves. And the, the goal is being stated here. By the middle of the 21st century, a team of fully autonomous humanoid robots, uh, robot soccer players shall win a soccer game compiling with official rules of FIFA against the winner of the most recent World Cup. So we are going to play with a full team uh, with 11 robots against uh, human players. And the idea was uh, behind this goal that in those 50 years uh, we uh, a lot of spin-offs from this project will be uh, developed um, and those spin-offs are going to contribute in society. Th yeah, look at the bionic arm from 
uh, before, uh, for example. And so there are many more spin-offs. At the UE, we have one spin-off from our team, and they are working on eye surgery uh, robotics, uh, which makes it possible to, um, to perform uh, surgery which are not possible uh, to do by hand. So how are we going to achieve this goal? Um, as I said, RoboCup is worldwide. So we work with universities from all over the world. And we do this by this open source platform. We have competitions each year, but after this competition, we share everything with each other. Our hardware, software, everything we developed that year, we have to share it with each other. We do that after the competition, but also at the competition, as you can see, at the left side is a part of the competition that we present our latest innovations uh, to each other. And on the right side, uh, we are playing matches. So this competition uh, it makes us help uh, challenge each other uh, to, uh, to become better if, uh, uh, each year. We not only do this with robots from this side, uh, size. On this picture, more competitions are shown. So to uh, reach that goal of winning uh, a robot soccer game from human, uh, there are different competitions focusing on different parts of the game. Uh, on the left uh, side above, more smaller robots. They are really fast and they are really focusing, for example, on the strategy level. The other three pictures, they are all like human-like robots. Human robots we call them, in all kinds of sizes. So within RoboCup there are a lot of different soccer competitions and we are participating in one of them. So why did they choose robot soccer to develop uh, autonomous robotics? So first of all, uh, soccer is a really dynamic game play. Um, the robots on the field, they play with each other, they have to communicate with each other, but they also have to react on a moving environment. The environment is constantly moving and we can't predict what's going to happen. If you think of uh, autonomous cars, autonomous driving cars, it's actually the same. They have to react on a moving environment which they can't predict. Uh, besides that, uh, RoboCup already has a wider uh, application. We not only do soccer, but we only also develop care robots or rescue robots. And uh, developments we made with robot soccer, we apply to, this, to these competitions. A rescue robot is a robot who can uh, discover dangerous areas, which are dangerous to go for, uh, for human, and they can uh, discover it if it's safe to go there or if there are any um, people who need help, for example. So f about the care robots, I want to show you a movie, what they do during a tournament. This is Amigo, our robot, and in Brazil, um, uh, these robots do challenges uh, against each other. They do challenges like cleaning up a room, um, recognizing people, uh, answering questions. So human-robot interaction is really important. And in this case, he's going to order drinks. There's a party going on in this living room. There are several people, and they all want something to drink. And Amigo is going to find out where they are. He's going to try to recognize their faces. Uh, they are going to order uh, by Amigo, by the robot. Amigo is going to get the drink. Those people are maybe moving around in the room, but Amigo knows uh, their faces. He recognizes their faces, he remembers it, so he can find the right people for the right drinks. And was he also accurate in doing so? Sorry? Was he accurate? Yes, yeah, so uh, there should be sound with it, but it's not uh, right now. So now uh, this guy is ordering his drink. Um, he's asking the guy for a look at me and uh, stay still for a second. He's trying to recognize his face. Uh, and here Amigo is getting the drink and he's driving back to the right uh, person. Yes, this is actually something he can do very good. And here he's picking up the right drinks. So you see there are more drinks standing on the desk, 
but he also knows what a cola is, what is a water, what is a beer. He can distinguish those uh, uh, objects. Okay, the last thing, why do we play robot soccer? It's also really appealing for to the people. So uh, this is a nice picture. This was taken uh, one and a half months ago. We had a tournament in Eindhoven and this was the final match and there were about 2,000 people watching this, uh, this match and they were all cheering and so uh, soccer is really recognizable for a lot of people, not only people uh, who are uh, interested in robotics do like this game, but a, a lot more people. It's a really nice way to get them in touch with uh, robotics, with autonomous systems which are becoming more and more a part of our society. It's too bad there's no sound with this one. Uh, this was the final match uh, in Eindhoven in 2013 of the World Championships. And just before the end of the game, we, um, we scored the two against two. Uh, we were one behind and we thought we were going to lose. We did lose eventually, but uh, this gave us another chance. And our robot is trying to find a spot to score and he does. And the 5,000 people in the uh, in the um, uh, in the stadium we're all cheering like yeah well like it was PSV who was becoming a national champion for example and it was, it was a really nice experience to see how people react on this game even though those robots do not care if there are 5,000 people watching or no people watching so very shortly how these uh, robots uh, robots work um, but we are giving presentations today live and they are also, we can also tell you there everything about it. We play five against five on fields from uh, 18 meters by uh, 12 meters and the match is two times uh, 15 minutes. And this is how our field player looks like and on the uh, right side our goalkeeper. He's a little bit bigger, there are restrictions, we play following the FIFA rules, but we have some adjustments of, uh, for robot soccer. And these robots cannot be larger than uh, 80 centimeters high and 50 centimeters uh, wide. And our robot, uh, our goalkeeper has some racks and he can extend them once every five seconds so he can make himself a little bit bigger so he can defend the whole goal. Our robots have uh, several cameras. Uh, one is here on top, it's called the Omnivision. With this camera, he can see 360 degrees around himself. This camera is pointed upwards towards a mirror. And with this mirror, he can... He sees this. Uh, he can see the lines, the white lines, very clearly. He sees the ball, this is an orange ball and he all recognize this by the color and um, so by the white lines he can also uh, localize himself on the field he watch where, where are the lines around me then he knows where he is on the field and the ball he recognizes by the color, in this case orange so if you have your orange shoes on and you go on the field you will definitely have a robot uh, behind you and here you can see someone standing and that's an object and our robot will always try to avoid this uh, object. He doesn't know what it is, uh, but he also will not bump into it. But the field is uh, uh, perfectly symmetrical, isn't it? Yes. Does oh. he ever get confused which goal to head for? It's a really good question. Uh, it's indeed um, uh, symmetric. A um, few years ago, about seven years ago, the goals, uh, we had a, a yellow goal and a blue goal and that's how the robot knows uh, which side he had to score and which side he had to defend. But at some point the Federation said we're not going to do that anymore, two white goals and you have to figure out how you're going to solve it. Now our robots have a compass, so using a compass uh, they know on which side of the field uh, they are. It's a good question, thank you. Um, well as you can see uh, from this Omnivision camera by looking through this mirror the robot only has a 2D, um, a 2D uh, image. So he, uh, what happens if the ball is bouncing? Uh, the robot cannot see uh, balls in the air or he cannot uh, localize them. 
for our field players, not that big a problem. For our goalkeeper, however, it is a problem if you can't see a high ball uh, f uh, coming flying through the goal. Uh, therefore, we have our Kinect cameras. Our goalkeeper has two. Our field players also have one uh, since a few years. And with this camera, he can see at least in front of him also the bouncing balls or the higher balls and balls above the 80 centimeters, above uh, his head. So the next thing, uh, shooting, also a very important thing for a soccer robot. And we do that electronically uh, with a maximum of 14 kilome kilometers per hour. And he can, he needs some time to charge his battery, of course, but every five seconds the robot can give a full shot. Uh, but in between, he can pa make passes to his mates, of course, because that doesn't have to be a full shot. Ah, oh yeah. A big difference between human shooting and uh, robot shooting is that you cannot see uh, what is happening up front the shoot. So when a human shoots, he uh, gets his leg behind and he uh, hits the ball and you can appro approximate see in which direction the ball will go. For a robot, uh, for to see this by a robot is really difficult. If you come later to our field and you try to stop a penalty from our robot, you will see uh, the difference with a human shooting a penalty and a robot shooting a penalty. Uh, our robots are driving. We have robots uh, driving on wheels. Uh, there are also robots developed uh, more human-like, so do they, they have two legs. But these robots are driving, and we have three wheels. Uh, three wheels, and we call them omni-wheels. Um, that's because they have really li small wheels on top of them, and they are uh, passively rotating in a uh, on a... A uh, perpendicular uh, rotation uh, f from the, sorry, yeah, from uh, in the <laughs> perpendicular on the rotation axis of the of the main wheel. Uh, why is this? Well, in this way, our robot is real can e uh, move really easily around this axis. He can uh, uh, turn around while he's driving forward, um, and in this way, he's. Uh, way more s flexible than, for example, uh, car driving. And this is also an application we use with our um, uh, care robot, Amigo. So as an example, we developed it for our uh, soccer robots, but we use it also in our uh, care robot. So he's also really easy going within a domestic environment. Then, of course, we need to be able to dribble to dribble with the ball. You can see the ball here, uh, the, the robot here moving around uh, with the ball. He has two wheels where he handles the ball with, and these wheels are turning inside. And this way he can drive backwards with the ball without losing it, forward, turning around without losing it. Here is a close up. So these he two arms, we call them. Here are the wheels. They are constantly turning during the match. And when he gets the ball, he's tracking it into his system. He's only allowed to have the ball for one third. The rest of the ball has to be free. And uh, so the, the opponent is able to uh, yeah, gain the ball from him. And the final thing, of course, communication is really important because our robots can now uh, play very well on their own. They can drive, they can shoot, uh, and they can dribble with the ball. But we have a team. We play five against five, and we really uh, uh, want to play as a team. We want to make passes to each other. We want to play out our opponent uh, smart. So the robots communicate about their position, about the ball position, position of the obstacles. And they have to do this because on a field of 80 by 12 meters long, they are not able to see the whole field by themselves. So the camera has uh, limitations in the distance and the accuracy. So they have to share this information with each other. 
And we're also sometimes uh, experimenting with uh, human-robot interaction. We do this in robot soccer, but you can imagine uh, for care robots, this is very important, uh, human-robot interaction. And here we are giving on strategy level um, instructions to one of the robots. And then a movie to show you how this all looks like in a match, in a real match. This is the final in 2014 in Brazil. This is our team. We are playing in blue and our opponents is a Chinese team. They're a little bit bigger. They uh, are also a little bit faster than we are. They are playing with four wheels, for example, four motors. They can accelerate harder. But on the other end, we are um, uh, much better in making passes to each other, or as, uh, in playing as a team. So here we are uh, taking a goal kick. And our robots, we pre-programmed some strategies for free kicks, for goal kicks, for example. And our robot decide on, um, depending on how the game is at that moment, so how our opponents are at that moment um, positioned, they decide which free kick they will take. So uh, we pre-programmed some of the, uh, we pre-programmed the, uh, free kicks, the choices they have, but they make the choice on their own while playing. We're not controlling them, they make the choices by themselves during the game. We are not allowed to fear with the game uh, when they are playing. But you did program them to, to detect the free kick, right? Yeah, so um, the uh, when the ball is out of the play or there is a, a violence during the game, uh, we have uh, a referee on the field, I do, uh, here is one for example, and those are human. We have two referees, one main referee and uh, one referee at a computer and that is the only person who is in sta stays in contact with the robots. So when the ball is out of the field, he says stop and he uh, gives a comment that uh, the blue team has a free kick. So they cannot detect it by themselves, but they get the command from the referee. It was a tight game, but we won eventually here in Brazil, the, the World Championships, with uh, three against two. So finally, a small movie. Each year after the RoboCup, we play a small match against human um, to see how we are we doing uh, towards this goal for 2050. Well, these human are not the world champions uh, in soccer. Um, but this was actually a really nice moment because you see, we are scoring against human. It was the very first time that happened. And the goalkeeper is really trying to stop to stop us from scoring, but the robots were smart enough to make the final pass. So this was what I wanted to tell you. Again, I want to invite you to come watch uh, the live demonstration. And of course, follow us uh, by our website. At the end of June, we are going to uh, Leipzig for the next uh, World Championship. Thank you. Thank you. Would you take some Q&A? Yes, of yes? course. Okay. You said there uh, was not oh, a compass in the robot. Uh, Sorry? You said there was a compass yes. in the robot. Uh, but the electronics, doesn't uh, the uh, magnetic uh, field that's created by the electronics uh, give uh, uncertainty in the compass? Or yeah, so uh, exa for example, when we want to play here, we uh, strongly ask the organization there should not be any cables uh, uh, in, in the ground where we are going to play because that would I indeed interfere with our compass, yes. So at those tournaments, it's always uh, right, but when we go to a place like this, yes. So that would be a problem then, yeah. More questions? Yes, Adi. I'd like to know if the white robot can sing or make music. Uh, is there any voice in it? 
Um, the, oh, the care robot. Uh, yes, this, this one is developed to operate in a household. So he is able to communicate with uh, people. He can also make music. Uh, he sometimes dances on the Macarena, for example. <laughs> Uh, but he's al also able to communicate, so he's asking questions when uh, ordering drinks. He's really asking questions and waiting for answers, uh, yes. And what language does he speak? Uh, English, mostly, yes. And will he learn more languages? Uh, probably in the future, but for now uh, it's English, yes. Should be easy for a robot to learn new languages, right? Yes, yeah, I, I'm not sure uh, how he uh, now learns a language. I think he's using a library or something. And, well, English is the most common uh, language at sure. this moment. Yeah. Yeah. More questions for Lotta? Yes, yeah? here's a question. Yes. Uh, are the robots uh, completely autonomous or is there also a central server you communicate with? No, the robots are completely autonomous, yes. so. They have all the information and make all the decisions. Uh, yeah, each robot does that and communicate with each other. Yeah. A question in the back. I will. I will get to you. I'll walk slowly to you towards you. Just a second. Can I pass? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, when is the next demonstration? Um, at six. Okay. At six. Be yes. there. And at eight we have another one, so thank Can you. Can I ask you one more question? Yes, sure. I was wondering, what, what do you think is going to be our first encounter with a robot? How is it going to affect our lives? Um, as you see, um, well, the, the rescue robot, for example, I showed uh, very shortly, uh, those are already used actually when in Japan there was this uh, um, disaster with um, at the Cairn reactor yeah in Fukushima, Fukushima. indeed uh, rescue robots they were used to go into that area where it was dangerous for people so in those applications they are already used in daily life um, I can imagine uh, a care robot uh, as a help in um, cleaning our houses. Sorry? Cleaning our houses. Cleaning houses, but also with elderly people to help them uh, remember to take uh, something to drink or to eat or take their medicines, uh, those things. Yeah, more questions? About the care robot, uh, does it also account for pets or not yet? What do you mean if uh, he pet, can uh, like calculate a, like his own... Like a cat or a dog uh, in oh. the home. If, if it also take that into account when it is there. Um, with our care robot, not yet. No. So in the near future, you can imagine a robot walking your dog. <laughs> that would be a picture in our, uh, in our, in our neighborhoods. Yeah, nice yeah. question. <laughs> There's one more question in the back. Uh, I want to ask uh, your robots, do they think individually or they think as an entity? Sorry, the uh, last part. Do they think individually or they think uh, as an entity? How uh, so they uh, make their decisions individually at this moment, yes. Uh, and uh, and they, they communicate uh, their decisions uh, with others. So the one with the ball, he makes a decision, uh, what's the best thing to do? Dribble for a while, uh, make a pass to my teammate, uh, or shoot at goal, and he will communicate that decision uh, um. to his teammates. Uh, so, so basically the one with the ball is the, uh, is the commander. He, he, his decision Yeah, at that point, most. yes. Uh, but, but, but what about uh, uh, they are in defense? So, so, so no commander, oh. uh, every, uh, every robot is... Yeah. Then, uh, as you every robot has their own task, we, uh, yeah, every, yeah, every robot has their own task, and they are working in that task. And each task is differently, so they will not interfere with each other. Uh, so, so they don't conflict. Uh, no. Uh, you, you avoid this. Okay. No. Yes. Thank you. That was a smart question. Thank you. Okay. So, um, we're going to be um, changing the stage for our next speaker, but not before we give Lotte a big hand because this is. Really, uh, truly an innovative field.
thank you.